Oh, oh! Yeah, nice! Uh, swoop! Now you pop the fuse. No, I have a, a breaker, but... Oh, okay, well, it's probably too high for breaker. A little... <laughs> uh, we have audio? Audio here? All right, ready? Are we ready? <laughs> Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with my daughter, May Danner, who is actually taking Caleb's job today. We're uh, gonna use the tripod for the main camera. She's gonna be holding a smaller camera. Caleb's on his honeymoon, just got married. So we're absolutely missing cameraman Caleb right now. Um, Scanner Danner, or dad, has no idea how to work this camera. And so hopefully this will turn out okay. We're working on a Mazda Miata that has a fuse that's blowing. Uh, so this is a short to ground test video. Hopefully this goes well. You ready? Yep. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing is probably gonna be in here uh, because the fuse box, yeah, well, I'll have you sit on the other side here. Yep, go take that, go on the other side. Just whatever, whatever I'm doing, you just try to capture it. That's all. We'll do the best we can. Neither one of us know what we're doing. All right, so step one on this Mazda is, well, history would help you guys to know. Let me, let me read this to you as we're gonna check this fuse box. This is a 2005 Mazda Miata. It says, um, the fuse was blowing when going down hills. Engine fuse. This fuse box that's in here, I can't see markings on this at all. Nothing on the back side of this, which kind of stinks. But I'm looking at the fuses, and my guess, looking at these, is it'd be this 15 amp one that is a lighter blue than the rest of them. That's probably the one that they're changing. Let's just do some quick test light tests on these. I uh, need to have the key on. All right, May, so talking to you and the audience here, when you check fuses, what you want is that light. This light should light on both sides if the fuse is good, okay? And on this one, see it's only lit on one side. It's a 15 amp fuse, and that, that fuse is definitely blown. Pop that fuse out. Blown fuse. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna install a tool. This is bad where we're at here. Caleb's probably like, why are you filming from there, Dad? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. I used to use a small camera by myself. Got all this fancy crap now. What's up, baby? It, it wasn't focusing? No, but no. You can touch the screen on what you want to focus on. Oh. I'm just using an old school short circuit tester here. Um, it's just a, basically a circuit breaker and a little uh, inductive, it's essentially a compass. Picks up magnetic fields. A little change up here on on the adapter we're using. I'm gonna use this adapter, but I'm gonna plug that into the fuse and essentially, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this setup. This is my cir circuit breaker. Plug this in. Just plugging this into the location of where the fuse was. My key is on. Let's see if it starts. Make sure we're neutral. All right, so what we were told is that in the customer's notes that when they're going downhill is when it does it. And then my brother just told me that it does it all the time and which is blow the fuse. And that's not the case. That fuse is not blowing at the moment. I need to find out what is on this circuit and uh, then we start doing some visual inspections. So right now this fuse is not blowing, which sucks. 
<laughs> I can't see. I, 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 I need my readers. Okay, it just says engine 15 amp. Let's plug our circuit breaker back in. You're doing exactly what I need you to do. You just kind of follow me around. Yeah, people can get some behind the scenes stuff here on what, what's involved when you, especially when you don't have your normal camera, man. This fuse is not blowing all the time, by the way, Danner. No? Nope. What if you try to start it? I did. And it started? Yeah. Ah. No big deal. I mean, you'll have that. MX-5 Miata. So is this a base, an LS, or a Mazda Speed? <laughs> MX-5, that's all it says. What do you think? probably wants it to be a Speed. Right? Standard transmission. Wiring diagrams. What we want is our power distribution diagram. And then I want to find my engine fuse. Engine fuse, 15 amp. Feeds cooling fans, air conditioning, engine controls, computer data lines, supplemental restraints, anti-theft, and headlight system. Ha! Okay, first thing I noticed when I opened this hood, we'll get a shot of this, May. Someone, see if you can get a shot of, of this wiring here. Someone's messing with the headlights. We have aftermarket headlight stuff here. Looks like somebody's put some HIDs in here. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, we don't ever like scotch locks especially under the hood. This is passenger side, same kind of thing. A little bit of history would be good here. Like when did this problem start? Cooling fans, air conditioning, engine controls, computer data lines, supplemental restraint, anti-theft, and headlight system. Uh, I just really want to do a visual inspection. Well, let's go uh, back. Turn the headlights on, maybe, and see if we have headlights. See if I take this fuse out. Get a shot of the headlights, sweetie. I'm going to unplug the circuit breaker, and those headlights are staying on. So that's interesting that even though the diagram says headlights are on there, ah. Uh, this sucks. Cooling fans, let's do a quick visual on that. Doing some visuals. That's wiring to the AC compressor. Looking for points of contact. He said hills. Makes me want to go underneath and look at it. Here. Let's see what all is on the engine control system. Engine fuse. Let's highlight that guy. Feeds our ignition coils. Black and white on 21 and 22. So I was pointing right there. Right, we're gonna go off the page. So I'm over here. Really like that. Ah, it does go to the O2 sensors. And this thing's been modified. And seriously, I, the last Miata that I looked at, it had a heated O2 sensor that was hitting on the floor, blowing the fuse. That's the first thing I want to look at. I want to look at these O2 sensors because the engine fuse feeds them. Let's see what else. So we go off the page again on 20 and then it feeds the PCM itself, or the engine computer itself. O2 sensors is absolutely our next, our next check. I need to do a visual on these O2s. Going downhill, coasting or braking, that's gonna have a certain engine torque to it as opposed to accelerating. I keep looking over here because my daughter's over this way. I should be talking to you guys. I'm sorry, she's got a camera on me too and that one's gonna be a better screen. Caleb can do this in the edits. There's 4K, there's 1080, 4K. 
1080. Danner, I need to get this up so I can look at the O2 sensors. I was afraid that I was gonna need to get under it. Yeah, we'll just jack it up. Cause they're, the O2s are on this engine fuse. Uh, the last Miata I looked at, uh, the last Miata I looked at had a blown fuse for the alternator circuit that ended up being the heated O2, mm -hmm. hitting off the floor. Uh. So modifications definitely have been done on this car. Yeah. Can't even get this under there, man. Stupid lowered cars. Just kind of looking at the O2 wiring here, upstream one. Initial view is it looks okay. This exhaust has not been modified from what it looks like. Or is that the downstream? Actually, might be the downstream. This is not working. I need to be up in the air. Can't tell if the sensor I showed you guys was the upstream or the downstream. Looks like it might be the downstream, but I do not know. Because I don't see one up any higher. Which means, where's the cat? Absolutely do not see another sensor. So that was the upstream sensor that we were looking at. I could only see this bottom part right here, which looked like it was a cat. Everything else is covered under a shield. It's not, that's just the exhaust header. Um, this, is, this is our upstream O2 that we were looking at. The downstream, the reason I can't see it is because it's in the middle of the cat on the other side. So of course, it's on this side of the car that we get our visual on that, which really, really stinks because I can't easily see that. Let me take a look again. Some of you guys are thinking, where's your creeper at? Creeper's up too high. Cardboard's flat on the ground. Always liked cardboard better than a creeper, always. There's your O2. And then the wiring runs down that way. And then the bracket's broken, which I was encouraged to see. I was thinking, oh, that's gonna be laying on the exhaust. It's not. And it's mounted back to here and then goes into the floor right here, which you can't really see. So just a quick visual, I don't, I don't see anything there. Ignition coils were on that too. Looking at the harness that goes to the ignition coils. <gasps> I just saw smoke. That was all that scared me for a second. We we found our short. <laughs> that was pretty cool. A little puff of smoke right there. Points of contact, people. Points of contact. It is right there. A harness has rubbed into that bracket right there. As soon as that breaker trips. <laughs> Sweet. Found it! We'll make Danner fix it. So. But surely everyone wasn't kung fu fighting. Wait, <laughs> 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 see this my shirt. beard. His shirt. <laughs> of course you have a shirt like that. <laughs> so I was just doing visual. So I, I just looked at the engine fuse and it, it did say that headlights were in there too. And this has aftermarket yeah. headlights. So I looked at that, pulled the circuit breaker off and the headlights stayed on. So I was like, well, I don't okay, care. Yeah. I moved away from that. Looked at the engine side, focused on the O2s because of heat. Mm -hmm. They look fine. Mm -hmm. Ignition coils are the only other two that are on that. Ignition coils, O2, and then the computer itself. So then I just did a quick visual on this and then it scared me at first because I saw smoke. <gasps> We're gonna see it. It's right in this corner, right? Oh, right here, watch. Oh, oh. Oh, watch. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Swoop. Now you pop the fuse. No, I have a, a breaker, but. Oh, okay, well, it's probably too high of a breaker. A little bit higher than <laughs> what it should be. <laughs> but that actually helped me. Yeah. But that's it. I mean, that's where our problem's at. Crazy, right? Yep. Crazy that, you know, that harness is even in, it's even where it should be, you know? We'll pull this apart and take a look yeah, at but, it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You wonder if that PCV thing should have been flipped around. 
Oh. Yeah. That looks, honestly looks like it should be flipped around so it can't rotate. Here, let me see that so we get a shot of what Danner's talking about. I wonder if someone pulled that out and put it in. I don't know. I mean, it looks like maybe, usually when you see that, maybe it's supposed to be flipped so it can't yep. rock back and forth and break. Because yep. there's no tab underneath. I'm just wondering. I sure looks like it, doesn't it? I'd be half tempted to see if it would flip around the other way. Or just... Man, tape it heavily and put a fuse in there. And... <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll open that up. Dude, that's crazy. You can't even see the spot. I mean, it's literally all of that from, from that little teeny tiny spot on the harness right there. Seriously? Yep, and that's what blew the fuse. That's what made the car die, made the car not start from it hitting right there. You got a nice sharp blade. I'm going to open that just so we can show the peeps. And I agree with you. I think we turn the turn that bracket around. Yep. And then you can see like how how oh, yeah, how damaged the this black and white wire. That's our guy. That's a heavy gauge wire too. So the wire is not broken at all. So really, we just want to. There's no damage to the copper. Uh, it's from, so vibration of the engine over time, that harness rubbing against this like that over and over and over and over, rubbed through the tape and burnt the wire. And that's why we have fuses in circuits, May, to keep wiring harnesses from burning up. Now, some of you might have a question on why we saw smoke. Well, my circuit breaker was probably uh, letting it trip a little bit higher amperage than what the fuse was rated for is my guess not not totally sure um i think that e even in the working circuit with a fuse in there you'd still see smoke momentarily whenever that wire touched ground all right there's a couple broken strands put a crimp connector in there yeah some of those strands are broken let me turn this key off we still have a live circuit I am installing a heat shrink crimp connector. That's cool. Looks like one of those things where like glow sticks. Yeah. I'm getting a perfect shot right now. Awesome. It's just a torch adapter for my uh, soldering gun, and then it has a, a loop to keep it from melting anything else, which is pretty cool. Wait, so is that hot? Yes, it's got a flame, and you're gonna see it's gonna start shrinking it. Oh. And this is kinda in my way, this little shield thing. Taking it off, you guys won't be able to see otherwise. Go. You think we ought to turn this bracket around, Danner? Don't drop the bolt. Don't drop the bolt. Or the bracket. That's what's going to happen here. Then I'm going to be real mad because I'm going to lose it. Let's see if we can flip this around. No, I, I believe that was correct, Danner, in the way it was. Because it's got a little clip right here that hooks on the bottom. So that was correct the way it was. Just weird. Definitely correct. So we're just gonna have to put some extra uh, insulation on this part of the harness so that doesn't happen again. All right, so let's get some Tessa tape. You stay there, sweetie. So what kind of tape do you use for this? Um, it's called Tessa tape. It's like a real, fibrous tape it's made for underhood stuff and uh, that's a good question because my my community would want to know the same thing what do you use electrical tape for? Uh, electrical tape is okay for like interior stuff stuff that's not in the weather it, it's a different style of electrical tape it is electrical tape in a sense tessa tape 
So you guys that are wondering where you get this, I have some Tessa tape uh, linked on my Amazon page so you guys can find it there. And that would be uh, in the description of this video, you can find my tool links. I need some kind of a shield to put over this. Just gonna put a piece of conduit around this. And that'll help keep that from rubbing through again. It'll be, a, if it does. So May's not used to making this kind of money. No, What's a, this is my first time I'm getting paid by the hour. Yeah. All right, we're gonna tuck this harness back down where it belongs. And that, this is a, a factory uh, harness location. Like that tab, it, this thing was where it should have been. It just a long time of rubbing on the same spot. So any, any of you guys that own the uh, Miata, you definitely want to look in this area if you have a engine fuse that is blowing. That's it. That's the repair. We're going to go inside the car, change the fuse. So just removing this short circuit tester and all, all I'm using, yeah, all I'm using is a inline circuit breaker and a little fuse adapter tool. That's it. You can really probably make your own. Uh, where this one, where I got this one, I have no idea. Someone gave it to me. Uh, it comes with a little meter. And so what you do, if you, if you didn't know where the short was, um, you can follow the harness along and follow your needle sweeps. And that's only though when you have a hard short. It's gotta be happening. Where ours, it wouldn't short unless I touched the harness. Um, so the key, honestly, guys, is to know what's on the circuit. Know what's on the circuit, visual inspection. Um, the circuit breaker helped us in that it allowed us to first see smoke <laughs> before the breaker tripped. And the nice thing about that having a breaker is you don't have to keep changing fuses while you're doing inspections. I mean, in a pinch, buy a box of fuses. And if you have an intermittent short, you know, start wiggling the harness and wiring until the fuse blows. I mean, you can do that. That's essentially what we did. The difference is the circuit breaker resets itself where a fuse does not. Sweet. Needing you on a box. Now you can see you better now. I'm gonna pull you. <laughs> well, special thanks to my daughter, May. I don't know what YouTube's rules are on having children in your videos. Anyway, I think May did a good job. We'll see how Caleb does in the edits. Caleb will still be editing this video. He'll make it look great for us. Uh, I think May and I did okay on our own without Caleb. You're hungry? Yeah. Me too. I'm hungry too. Um, last comment to you guys is short to ground testing there is not one method for doing that i showed you one using a circuit breaker today and then really having service information and knowing where to get wiring diagrams and knowing where to look right wasn't that key knowing where to look uh, most of the time doing short to ground testing when it's a hard fault like that it really is visual inspection and knowing the harness so good service information is needed um, i'll provide a link in the description of this video for a diy version of the service information that I used. Same wiring diagrams. They're just black and white instead of color, uh, but it's like 19 bucks or 20 bucks for your car for the month. Also my tool links, don't forget about that. And then other short to ground videos I've done. I'm thinking of one, this is on the premium channel though. It was what it was titled the ugly cobalt. It was a Chevy cobalt and it was really ugly color. We had a short to ground on that one. I'll put a link to that video and then one other one i'm thinking of is another mazda that i did that had an alternator that wasn't charging ultimately blowing a fuse 
That was a two-part series. That's right here on YouTube. You'll find those links also in the description. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Tell my daughter May, hello, and thank you. This won't be the last time she helps me, so you guys will get to see her involvement a little bit more as we move forward. Oh, and don't forget to congratulate Caleb in the comments on getting married. That's why we're missing Caleb. He's on his honeymoon. Yep. Guys, we'll see you next time. Good? <laughs>